and I've selected two brushes, one for a big candle, a smaller candle, notice I'm using flat brushes, and one for a taper candle. This is Hansi Yellow, and I've gone with Phthalo Blue and Alizarin Crimson. You may use any colors you want, as long as you have a yellow of some sort, a blue, and a red. I'm using the Thalo simply because it's the purest color and the purest blue. Let me just show you on the side here. It, it's a great blue and it does not get pasty. It stays nice and clean. The only thing is it really dirties your water up quickly and if you get any yellow in it, it does turn green. So here I am getting my colors ready and I'll do the same for red, alizarin. Remember watercolors, we don't have to put them on thickly. We can get them on quite thin and then darken them as we go while they're wet. So we're going to put a light wash on here of each color and then we're going to adjust the bottom to make it dark and light at the top. I'm going to start with my big brush. And I'm going to take the blue, touch it, I don't want it to spread too much, put my brush this way, and I'm not going to go in the middle, I'm going to go on the side, I'm going to leave room here, I'm going to push it down, and just come up and see what happens, my goodness, nothing came out. Why? Oh, I know. I got rid of it all here. Too much. Try again. That's good. Now I can go this way. By pushing the brush down, I can get a candle shape. I can hold it closer too. Rub it a little bit. Tap the sides. Depending on how you want to get it, how good, just keep dropping in. Now I drop the color in. See at the bottom? And if I want this to go up, we have to, as you know, clear everything off and watch it run. Now here's we're having a nice small brush helps you move that around. See the puddle? Now the paint is still a little bit wet up there, but not too wet. And my puddle has pretty much reached the end of its journey. So I'm gonna tilt it this way. I'm going to take a little water and keep it tilted and soften the edge. Now I'm going to tilt it this way and let it run down and maybe add one more for the bottom. See? So I've gone from dark to light. Still have a bit of a puddle. That's okay. Okay, let's soften the top now. So get rid of the water on your brush and the paint. Get pure water. Touch the rag. really soften that top to exactly where you want it. There we go. Sometimes candles are also a little bit on an angle at the top. So that doesn't matter. Okay, there's my first candle, but uh, I'm, I'm really, I, you know, I could make this like really quick, but let's do a good job. Let's soften the top because when we looked at the picture of the candle, we noticed it was very soft around the top. And there we go. 
I might soften a little bit along the bottom too, just to add a little drop, just to sort of pull it over. Maybe it's in the snow. Maybe it's out in the snow in the yard and it's the winter solstice and you've invited some friends over to watch the new moon rising up as we come closer to the new year. Leave a little drop there. Just have a little fun with the shape. Oh, look at this. It's um, really moving here. Remember one of our principles, watch. So I am going to come down a little bit more with this. So it even bleeds out a little more. I wish I could just kind of fire these down and show you how to do this in four or five minutes, but you know what? You really do get what you put your time into. And sometimes, especially for a lighting effect, you have to take your time. There we go. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute because it is wet. And while it's wet, I'm gonna put the next candle in. I'll go for red. And put my brush up here. I don't wanna to be too close, that's wet. It's a little wet, that's okay. I can bring it down in a second. And I'm gonna pull it up a little higher to about there. Lift the brush right off. Maybe I'll add a little roundness to this one for a taper. See that? There we go, a little bit. Oh, I just about had too much there. Put that in there. And you've got to move everything again because you're going to tilt it. There we go. We're going to tilt it, make it run. And it's being a little stubborn. Why? Because the paper's dried already. So there's two ways to do this, and this is probably the better way. Put water on the top one. Now reverse the flow by tilting this way, but careful you don't lose it here into the blue. Just add a little water all the way down until you come near the red part, but don't touch it, not yet. Now tilt, tilt this way, and it should, see, wet, 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 wet the drip. Now we just have to encourage it a little bit and it's going to take off. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. There we go. And of course, it's only going to go where it's wet. I'm going with a little more random effect in this one. I'm just going to let it sit. Oh, it looks like even wax is dripping there. I forgot about the wax dripping. This could be wax dripping. Hmm, very good. So we come over a little bit, make the edge a little bit tappy. I'm going to put one more at the bottom. And now I let that sit there for a minute. A little dark at the top, so I'm going to let it drain a bit. I think this is a pick up the drip one. Dry my brush off, Just tap it on the paper towel over here, tap it, and pick up the drip. And now I think that's good. That's two candles. I'm going to um, lighten the bottom here a little bit. Let it drift into the scene here. One more candle, I gotta have three. I'm gonna bring this one right off the side of the paper. You don't have to do that. I mean, you're allowed to do anything you want. But this is going to be a little short one and he's going to come right up beside this one. I could have even put it behind him, but I'll just do it like that. Notice I haven't put my candles in anything. That's, that's up to you what you wanna put your candles in. And then a little bit of the blue dropped in. A little more of the red, drop it in. Let it puddle. A little more blue. We'll let that sit for a minute. And it's 
mixing on its own. And I'm going to let that sit, and while I'm waiting for it to sit, I'm going to take my small brush and put in the wick. Now, here's the trick to do the wick. Take some pure phthalo, some pure alizarin. I'll take a little drop of water from, say, over here. A drop. And just get it so that it's enough to mix. Now, we don't want to touch the candle here. And because that's wet, I have to soften the edge on that, don't I? So I have my other brush handy. And I'm going to just put a little bit of water up here. Soften that edge. It might come up a little higher and that's okay. Oh, yeah, look at this, it's really cool here. I don't know if you can see, it's mixing very nicely. So I've softened that edge. I'll let it sit for a minute. And remember, don't touch the wet paint. Put the wick in and there. Now the easiest way to do this is to actually put some wet, like a circle, up above one of the candles without touching the wick. It looks like it's just barely not touching there. And then now we're going to take a little bit of the pure yellow, just like we did with the pastels. Now I can see it touched the wick a little bit there. I'm wondering if that's a good thing or not. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to just touch it with a rag. There we go. And now what I do is just take a little wiggle like this and then just flick it up. And because it's wet all around here, this will in a few minutes spread. So you can use two brushes if you wish. One to wet and one to put the yellow on with. Just make sure your brush is really clean. Now here's the next one. I'm going to stay away from the wick this time. And I'm, rather than a circle, I'm going to do more like a teardrop shape. I can see I had a little bit of something in that. A little bit of color. There's my yellow there. And for my little guy, I think a little just a little light for him. So I'm going with a little circle on this one too. So round and round there. Full strength yellow. There we go. And I'm going to take a very small amount of the red. So you can see with the intense light on here, it creates a lot of shadows. And that's okay. Take a little bit of the red, touch it. Just put one little drop inside that yellow before it dries. There we go. It looks a little bit like it needs a little softening on that one. See how I blended that in? There we go. Remember this part is wet and it is watercolor paper so we're going to be okay. Perfect, and let that dry. While it's drying, I might add a little bit of more blue in here to go a little darker, see? I really like this frosted candle. It almost looks like it's been frosted over by the weather outside, or the wax has been dripping down it. So remember, the candle has to be soft edge, so as I'm moving up, I just keep adding a little more water because I want it very, very, very smooth, the transition. And one more dark at the bottom. And 
I'm gonna let that sit. A very dark one there. And do the same with the red candle. Put a little bit on, not right to the edge, bring it up a little. This is with flat paper. And then just dry brush it up if you can. And if it's stubborn, then use a little water. I don't know, that's coming down nicely. This one almost looks like it's in front of this one. Uh, quite liking that. I'm going to take a little bit of red here. You know, it's the small adjustments that make the difference, not the big adjustments. 